I love you. I love you too. dream last night I was in a forest with giant trees and magnificent things but I couldn't see any of it because I was this little speck on the ground I don't know like an ant or something and all I could see was the mud I was sitting in that was it that's all there was Did you, did you make it okay? Yes, the key was right where you said it would be. Listen, I'm sorry I wasn't there to greet you myself. Show you around. Oh, it's okay. Uh, uh, does anyone ever call you Winnie? No, not really. Oh, well then, okay. I won't presume to call you that then. How are you liking the house? Oh, it's... it's beautiful. Yeah, I thought you'd like it. It's over 150 years old. The house was originally an inn. That's why there are so many doors. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Listen, I, I really do appreciate you looking after the place for me. 
I appreciate you letting me. It's a gorgeous house. Well, you'll be uh, perfectly safe there, Wynn. Thank you. Yeah, I will personally make sure of it. I'm in the city, but you can call me anytime, day or night, all right? Whenever. You hear me? Will do. I hate making the bed. I know. But you have to make the bed to be able to get in it. Actually, no, you don't. <laughs> okay you sound like you've seen a ghost oh no everything's fine well if you see betty tell her i said hi betty the ghost legend has it she died mysteriously in the house and now she floats around and spooks everyone oh. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> anyhow uh, I, I was calling to let you know that Sometimes the power goes out, and I wanted you to know how to use the generator. Oh, yeah. I'd love to know that. Good. Hello? Stir it counterclockwise, not clockwise. That way you aren't wasting any time. We look out!
I don't know. I was hoping that being in a different place would distract me, but it hasn't yet. I'm worried I'll always feel this way. I know, but you won't. You just need to allow yourself time to grieve. How can I when it was my fault? It wasn't your fault. No one thinks that. I was driving. Do you remember that time when we were kids and you made the Big Dipper house out of cardboard? Yeah. Didn't have a roof so I could look at the Big Dipper at night. You worked really hard on it. it took you a long time. Pillows, constellations drawn in crayons on the sides and stuff. A moon-shaped door. But you worked the hardest on that telescope. You made everyone in the neighborhood eat Pringles for a week for those cans. <laughs> yeah, it was an amazing telescope, even if it wasn't magnifying anything. And then I broke it. Ziggy ran out in front of my bike, so I swerved and crashed my bike into it. And you broke your arm. Yeah, and I ruined your creation. It was an accident, though. <laughs> I see what you did there. You didn't get mad at me, which is rare for a kid. You were easy on me, so be easy on yourself. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, I gotta go. You know I'm here for you. I know. You were gone. I'm right here. So, have you um, perfected the bouquet toss yet? Because <laughs> we all know that's the most important part of the wedding day. Uh, yeah, it absolutely is. <laughs>
This reminds me of the 1997 Chinese monster film, Sunny Factory, where the hero gets himself in this compromised situation, not in a factory like the title would suggest. <clears throat> well, it's either Sunny Factory or Homer's Tale of Ulysses at sea with the sirens, but I don't have any wax, you know what I mean? What I'm trying to say is I'm completely vulnerable here. Who are you? <laughs> of course, who am I? Here I am, just scared of this strange woman, possibly a siren, interrupting my nightly diet for copper wiring, which retail costs way more than I'm willing to spend. Way more than I can even make. I'm just a man of the land. Why can't we all just live off the land? And of course, to get my fix of mechanic fantasies here too. When in actuality, I'm just a guy that's been working on this old truck for the past 10 years with no real progress. Just the thrill of driving her for five minutes before tinkering again. Have you ever had a truck set on fire while you're driving down the road? It's not even my truck. Although I have one of my own, I have been given permission. Right, so I got this sort of like therapy, but that sounds way too cliche. If you don't tell me who you are, I'm gonna call the police. Carl? Yeah, I know, his name is Carl. When you picture a cop, you just picture a Carl. We've got him. He's on duty tonight, you should give him a call. I don't know what he's been up to since I last saw him. Cody Mallard hit a deer and the damn thing didn't die. Sad, really. Carl was already on the scene when I drove by. They were just standing around this poor creature panting for life. The deer, not Carl, although he is known to break a sweat just sitting in his car. Luckily, I had my machete in the back of my truck, which was really lucky because I had taken it out only a few days prior to sharpen it but I still had to hack and hack and hack at the deer's jugular while it just jerked with every hack and put her out of her misery. I think Cody might have kept the head and I think Carl might have kept the body for me, but who knows if he even had the proper time to butcher it. I mean, he was on call that night. Oh, that's Lucy. Sorry, she's a cat and I'm scaring you. I should really make this very clear. I am the one that should be scared here. Why? Because I don't know you. I've been coming over here for years. I grew up in this town. I know everyone in this town. I helped put the extra support beams up in this barn. I've never seen you before. You're the stranger. I'm Chris. I'm here because one, wiring, two, the carburetor needs rebuilt, and three, because I need a tool to cut free a raccoon that was trapped in a badger trap. Now, I'm not here to hurt you, which I realize is exactly what the killer says. So to show you that, I'm gonna be leaving very soon. I'm Wynn. I'm watching the house for Bob. Who? I'm Wynn. Oh, Bob Morton, yes. I met him when everything happened, creepy dude. Don't know much about him before that, though. Jim was the one looking after this place before he passed away. No kid for Jim, so next of kin was Bob, who I guess is some sort of distant cousin or maybe his brother, I don't know. Jim was a man of few words. Good guy, but few words. He loved this place, though. Bob just gets people to stay here. Hey, you really scared me. Fair enough, didn't know anyone was here, but I take full blame. And since I am here, I'd prefer if you let me know when you're stopping by. I can do that. But you really should have had a weapon in your hands. You're a woman alone in the country. Why'd you even come out here? I, uh, I thought I saw someone. Was it Betty? Because you have to know, she isn't real. She's just a go, oh, it was me. Duh, it was me, of course. But you thought it was someone else. Death is hard. It'll haunt you every day if you let it. You'll learn to live in joy with it. Found it.
want to dispose of a body, here's the number for the local sanitation department. Hey there. Are you okay? Everything okay with you? Yeah. Just let my dinner get a little too smoky and the, the alarm went off. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love a good smoked brisket. Yeah. Well, I'm just calling, you know, see how you were settling in. You know, it's a bummer that those windows don't open, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm settling in just fine. Good. Um. So I found this picture of a couple that I think used to live here. Do you know where they live? I thought I might send it to them. Oh, well, there's been so many people that have come and gone. I mean, I'd have to see it. They say they want to experience farm life, but then obviously it doesn't suit them because they never stay too long. Hmm. Right? Yeah. OK. Here, you drive. Nice catch. everything you see. I need you so badly. Come here. The thing about small towns is that there aren't very many roads. I travel all the same places but don't have any patterns, you know what I mean? Why do people say that? You don't know what I mean yet, it's just filler. Anyway, the patterns are an important note because it means I drive by this house all times of the day. Now I don't need to have patterns because my life and my days are spent how I want to, under crippling anxiety, thinking about the universe and feeling like I have answers but then I don't, and the cycle continues on and on like that. Ah, patterns, they're everywhere unexplainable. They always argued that everything came from water, but nothing he ever said was written down. Sure, Aristotle could have mentioned him, but he could have misinterpreted what he meant. 
That's not a point. The point is, you've been here since October 11th, and it took me until today to realize you don't have a car, which means you're getting around some other way. But I thought about this. Now, I'm not looking at the driveway every minute of the day, and it's perfectly feasible that you could have got a Lyft or Uber or what have you left and come back in a window I didn't drive by, but you've got this sad girl dark energy about you, and my suspicion is that you're afraid of driving. And the hypothesis took a while to arrive at because at first, who, who doesn't have a car? Or perhaps your car is too run down to make the trip from wherever you came from and the Uber, Lyft lifestyle is very prevalent, but look, none of that matters. The point is, I don't know what you're eating or how because the only thing nearby is a gas station mark. So I'm here to take you to the store because whatever's keeping you from the store isn't going away anytime soon and I'm worried you're going to die. So. To quote Mean Girls, get in, loser. We're going shopping. I thought I told you to tell me when you're stopping by. I did. I honked. All right. I'll be there. Do you ever? Not right now. Driving is for listening to music. <laughs> I didn't say anything out loud? No. Forget it. The joke takes too long to set up anyway. Oh, by the way, I got you this, because I assume you didn't take my advice and get yourself a weapon, which most people don't. And though this may seem girly, I assure you the pain that can inflict is truly horrifying and long-lasting. Don't play with it. You didn't spray yourself, did you? The video was called Mace Face, and it got 17 views. A lot of views. I'm so sorry. That sounds horrible. It just feels so real. I mean, I can understand the nightmares, but seeing all that stuff with Liam, I'm telling you. This has got to be the PTSD. It's like your brain is playing tricks on you. But it's like he's actually here. I mean, I know he's not, but it's just... It's so real. And the phone... <laughs> What, what about the phone? Nothing. I just... I wish I could be there to give you a hug. When it's okay to have bad days, you just need to get through the next five minutes. I know. You're right. The nightmares and visions sound terrible, but I believe you can get through this. You're stronger than you think. I'm just not trusting my judgment. And my facial twitch is coming back and I just, I'm not doing good. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. They're calling about my car. I have to take this. I'll call you back. I love you so much.
What? What do you want to show me? Listen, I'm sorry to bother you. Oh, it's okay. All right, Wynn. Listen, it's a box marked Taxes 1992. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you where to look, but uh, all I know is it's down there. Um, Wynn, there's something else I need to tell you. I knew that couple in the photo. Brian and Jeannie. It was a tragedy. People believe he killed her and then killed himself, but, you know, I knew the kid. He wouldn't do that. They were murdered. Probably by some drifter. I mean, I feel responsible, because I never fixed the lock on the back door. Oh, hey, that's okay. It's fixed now. I'm so sorry I didn't tell you. I just didn't want to scare you. You're perfectly safe there, Wynn. I mean, you don't need to be afraid. It's always been a sleepy country town. And it's gonna stay that way. Sometimes life just throws you a curveball. You know that? <laughs> oh, here it is. Oh, <laughs> Eureka. I knew you'd find it. You wanted 1992? Yep, that's it. That's the year they came after me. Uh, well, I'm gonna need both hands to grab the box. I gotta go. Okay, well, listen, thanks. Appreciate it. You got it. The back door was open, so I came in, but I remembered to knock. From inside the house? Yes. Did you just text me? No, I don't have a phone. It studies you, it, it listens to you, I, I don't trust it. Plus, I listen to myself, I wouldn't want to subject anything else to that. Look, it's really weird talking through the door, and I know you're probably upset about the knocking thing. There's so many rules about the knocking. I will knock on every door from now on. Why do you have a gun? A gun? This is a brown vest, Wynn. It's a musket, an authentic musket, may I have you, from 1762. We're going shooting today. 
Come on. Oh, no. What? This is loose. It's fine. It's just cosmetic. There's a tool in the basement that I can use to fix it. That's the magical thing about this place. Whatever you need is already here. All right. First things first. What's that for? Our targets, for multiple reasons. One, tin cans are a cliche. I would use pop cans because they're more accurate, but it's just a lot to handle. Two, we can draw on them. And three, I love milk, so I had a bunch of these lying around. What are we drawing? Your worst fears. Why? Just do it. The spider? Really? Okay. Lame. Whatever. I'm afraid of spiders. I ate a spider once. Come on, Wayne. Give me something unique to you. Try again. You're afraid of diving boards? No. Heights. Ugh, no. What do you mean, ugh, no? You're just drawing and mentally googling these average fears and drawing them on here. Here. I'll draw it for you. Draw what? Fears don't go away on their own, Wayne. You have to go to war with them. Close, don't you think? Listen, the brown bess is a notoriously bad shot. Sure, they taught soldiers to raise it up and look down the barrel, but it was all for show. It, the bullet just goes wherever it wants. You know they had trouble hitting a man within 50 feet? Plus, it's a super satisfying when you hit a milky. I wouldn't want to deprive you of that. All right, there are 10 steps when it comes to firing a musket. You must follow all 10, or else you just have a 10 pound club in your hands. First, we level the fire. Oh, whoa, sorry, no. Safety first. Take these. There you go. Put those on. Good. All right, now put these on. It's <laughs> a lot. I feel fabulous. The gun will be very loud. You'll see a spark and some flames come out of the touch hole. Don't worry about that. You'll probably be fine. Probably? What? Let me just, let me just finish this. The yelling was getting on my nerves. Okay, next, paper cartridge. Contrary to popular belief, only fueled and romanticized by TV and film, they didn't typically use powder horns. The soldiers, anyway. They used these. Paper cartridge, lead bullet at the bottom, Approximately 100 grains of black powder, wrap it up. Rolling these is a fun pastime of mine when I'm watching Rick and Morty. Where did you learn all this stuff? When? All right, so you cast your bow. Oh, excuse me, sorry. You half cock. Open your cartridge. I'll just eat it. Use some of the black powder to load the pan, but not all of it. Now you cast your bow. Charge with the bullet, the powder, the paper, all of it. Just dump it in there. Draw your ramrod. And you nail best like a sailor leaving for scene. You don't know when you'll return. <laughs> like this? Then you return your ramrod. And we now have a fully loaded gun. 
That's right. I know. Saying safety first. <laughs> All right. Next step is going to be what makes it go live, so to speak. Full cock. Ready? Visor's down. Aim. Step back. Fiber. Oh. Now it's your turn. Okay. All right, ready? Slide this down. Okay. Aim. Fiber. <gasps> oh. That was exhilarating. Feels good, doesn't it? Yeah. Can we do it again? Uh, yeah. All right. Perfect. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. You forgot to take the ramrod out. When? Remember, you can't miss it. Any steps. There's so many steps. Yeah, and imagine doing this under the pressure of the enemy a hundred feet away. They were expected to load three cartridges in a minute. It's insane. All right, there you go. You're good now. Okay. All right. Ready? Mm. Visors down. Wait. Aim. I'm scared, and I miss you. It's gonna be okay. I can't do this without you. It's okay. I'm right here. No, you're not.
can't set the mace down. You scared me to death! Why do you keep doing this? It's not okay! I can see that, which sounds a lot like I can see. That's crazy, and they mean the same thing. Who doesn't keep soap in the kitchen? I told you not to come in here unannounced. I'm sorry, I knocked on the door and called your name. I assumed you heard me, were gonna meet me in the kitchen, which we did. Please do not come in this house unannounced. But I did announce it. My hands were just covered in oil and the situation felt very desperate. Please do not come in this house unless I've acknowledged you're here. I can do that. Where's your truck? I didn't even hear it. I parked out by the old shed. I was working out there all night. Even tripped a fuse at one point. Anyway, I thought we should go on a ride today. Can I wash my hands now? What are you doing? I'm getting in the truck. You're driving. I'm not driving. When? You know I can't. You're ready. I'm not doing well. Look, you look fine to me. Take these. You're gonna do great. This is good. We're in the vehicle. I don't like this. We're just sitting here, getting used to it. Why don't you touch the steering wheel? Chris, I don't wanna do this. I'm telling you, you can do it. I know you can, just touch the steering wheel, see how it feels. See, it's not so bad. It's not, this is what we do. We just take uh, small steps. Next, we turn on the engine. I don't want to. When? Look at me. I believe in you. Listen to her hum. How do you feel about driving a few feet? Okay. You got this. to encourage you. I know Bob left his truck for you, but don't feel pressure to drive. It's okay to take your time with that. Anyway, give me a call back if you want. Love you.
all of those are in the future. We fear the real feeling. It's our imaginations projecting bad outcomes in the future. But the outcome of fear, it's not in the present. I think that's why Roosevelt said, the only fear we have to it is fear itself. Fear is a lie. Don't believe it. Don't give in. Fear lives in the future. But you, you live in the present. everywhere too but I killed him I killed him just like Brian killed Jeannie I don't know what's going on I, I, I feel like someone is purposely tormenting me and I deserve it I, I don't know I'm scared to death and I, I can't escape my own thoughts. I saw us dead. We're going to die. I saw us dead. Hey. Hey. I saw her. Come with me. Come with me. Maybe it's a bit misplaced to give it to you right now, but I brought this to apologize to you for making you drive. I'm sorry. I have this tree in my front yard that I get to see in high gale winds, and it's unbelievable what this thing goes through during a storm. And you would never know it to see it. Most of the time, it's perfectly calm, enjoying the sunshine. But I just love knowing it survived those storms because then I don't worry so much if another storm comes. I mean, I think the storm's gonna pass.
The note. No. No. I won't let myself hurt you. I want you to know it's not your fault. And I love you. I could never get it right. Right. Phone showed left. I'm right, not left. I'm right. Try it. Hello! I love you! Tuesday afternoon. What was? You were in the parking lot talking to someone, just laughing and smiling, holding your groceries. The bag of chips on top was so close to falling out because of all your animated movements. <laughs> you didn't even notice. I don't know what shined brighter that day. You were the sun. And just as I was walking by, it was as if this, this invisible force just knew my heart's desire. Knocked that bag of chips on the ground just so I could pick them up. The day we met. I know it sounds foolish to say, but I don't care. Because I knew in that moment, 
that I never wanted to spend another day without you in my life. Me too. Suddenly, every single moment before then just, just felt like it was conspiring to get me in that parking lot on that day. And my prayers were answered, Winnie. I got to spend the rest of my life with you. This wasn't how it was supposed to happen. It was supposed to be us, not just me. We had a whole life plan together. I know, but when I think about that girl in the parking lot on that day, so vibrant in an ordinary world, the girl I fell in love with. I know that's who you are, always. With or without me. There is joy after this, I promise. But now, right now, I need you to shine out and fight. You can do this. You have it in you. There's something I need to tell you. What's that? It wasn't your fault. It was an accident. I don't blame you. But now I have to go. No. No. I love you. I love you so much, Winnie. Hello. Oh, no, I'm not here to kill you. Although, I did try my best to get you to do it for me. It was you doing all those things. Guilty. But all things to you. What do you mean? 
Well, without you, I'd just be stuck in the ether. You see, your fears gave me life, and I thank you for it. And really, I was only showing you who you really are. We both know there's only one of us in this room. What are you talking about? You know. Only one of us has actually killed someone. No. <laughs> I've done a lot of things that I'm not proud of. But no one has ever died at the work of my hands. I'm not a murderer. You're a monster. Oh. Oh. Now that hurt. You're only saying that because you can't possibly accept that you are one. But I'm you. So maybe I am a monster. Maybe I am a murderer. Or maybe I'll kill you and then I'll live out in the world as you and no one will know the difference. I messed up a couple times, but I, I've learned my lesson and I'm now the most announced guest you've ever had. I'm walking up the back porch now. Seven steps. Win, are you home? Of, of course you're home. Wait, nope, you want me to knock? I'm going to knock now. Chris, you can't be here. Chris, you need to leave. You've got to stop greeting me this way. <laughs> no, Chris. I found this. I think it belongs to one of these doors here. No. Yes, see, I knew it, but this isn't missing anything. Where did this come from? Wait, we've got to get to the bottom of this. Chris, leave! You okay? I know it's going to sound crazy. Well, I'm crazy. And you know what they say, you can't fight crazy with crazy, or is it that you shouldn't? Because it's, to me, it seems like if you're going to fight something, you got to match it, or at least outmatch it in terms of crazy. Chris, shh! Things have been happening. Dark things. I thought it was me, but it's just someone or something that looks just like me. Now I know that it's the one doing all the terrible things. But I don't know what to do, Chris. I don't know how to get away. I don't know how to fight it. Well, I have a lot of questions, like what is it? But first, I want to let you know that I believe you. And we'll figure this out. That's what I was hoping to hear. Thank you. Chris, stop! Don't trust it! Okay, uh, um... You have a, you have a two, oh, okay. You step back. Oh, <laughs> all right, I see. I see, this is, this is, this is classic. Honestly, this is very good. The way that you've set this up, when, well, when, which, 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 when, <laughs> right? Because this is the, this is the twin thing, the, 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 the early 2000s. I've seen the movies, you know, where this is the twin switcheroo. I, this is a good setup, especially with the creepy, uh, you know, Brian's phone and, and, ah, the, there's a doppelganger of me. It looks like me. That's good. Honestly, it's, it's very scary. I, I, the work that you've done is incredible. Clearly, you know, I did, I was scared a little bit right here. Um, oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So which... Twin, <laughs> I'm, I'm win is really, which, what is your, what is, which, which is win? Which twin, this is, this sounds silly. Which twin is win? No, I don't have a twin. I don't know what it is. I'm win, that is something else. It's lying, it's me, Chris. You have to believe me. Chris, look at me, you know me. You need to leave here, it isn't safe. This is, this is incredible. Honestly, you guys have done so well. Um, I see. Okay, all right, I get the pattern. I understand the game now. I understand the game, okay? Let's play the game. Um, 
I gotta give like the, 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 the quintessential question, the real win would answer, correct? Okay. Um, what did I give you the other day? A tree. <gasps> ah, it's not gonna work because whenever I had my phone on me, it was listening and watching. Forget it. Of course. Get out of here, Chris. Ah, shit. Remember, it's a mirror image. What does that mean? I mean, I guess that's a good justification. Wow, you guys really did the work. Why would you do all this work? Weapon, 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 weapon. Weapon. I heard it too. You stay back. Chris, shh. It's me. I don't have a weapon. I'm not gonna hurt you. Is that what it sounded like when I said it? You think I believe it's not you just because you said that? Okay, that's true. What can I show you? How can I convince you? That's your problem. Oh, look, remember when I caught myself? See, look, Chris, it's me. That cut is on your left hand. When you cut your right, you're lying. You're wrong. I'm right-handed. I cut with my right hand, so I would cut my left hand. No, I know what I saw. You're lying. You think I'm an idiot? Well, I think you're an idiot. Chris! teach you not to run into a maze? Of course not. You're just a dumb little mouse. <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you. I just want to talk to you. But just in case. Okay. You know, when I'm actually helping you. Uh, uh, you've been a burden to everyone. And I can help you with that. Die, bitch. You missed a step. What a 
a shame. We both know you'll never drive. Bad things happen when you do. Why you'd run to where you saw yourself dead is beyond me. Did I ever tell you the story of Henry? No. It's another tree story. Henry was a sequoia tree, and like all the sequoias, he was tall and strong. In fact, he was the tallest of all the trees in the forest. His branches reached up far above the others, up into the clear blue sky. Henry had a bird's eye view that went on for miles, so he would describe the different sunsets to the shorter trees below. And though they couldn't experience the vivid sky the way he did, Henry used such poetic prose that all the living creatures of the forest got to enjoy the sunsets. This lush Eden went on like this for centuries, until one night, Henry saw something red hot falling from the sky. Sticking out further than the others, a tiny spark landed in his branches, igniting into fierce flames. The fire consumed Henry, turning him to ash. When the forest awoke the next morning, a blanket of sadness took hold. Everyone stared at the embers with a heavy heart. But then something truly magical happened. The heat from the fire opened the seeds that had fallen from Henry's branches, causing them to take root. From death came new life. Other trees grew tall and reached the clear sky, experiencing it as Henry did. In the sky and breath We go take from on Children dream of a cat In the sky Up the heaven We dream Train for us cattle in the cloud In the squad We stow a high and to rest and warm Gather in the glow We dream perform in the dream of fantasy We heard squam A world of dream in the sorted room Gather in the glow Ooh, We dream they fly in the land of make believer So bad In the cold, in the brim of the night. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
In the sky in birth We go take from all Children dream of a cattle In the sky Up the heaven We dream Turn from a cattle In the cloud In the earth's quiet We store a high And to rest and warm Gather in the glow We dream perform In the dream of fantasy We heard Squam A world of dream In the short day room Gather in the glow We dream to fly In the land of make believe So bad with every squeak and every sigh, get in the cold, in the brim of the night. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah.